Hey everybody, it's Carl's Mortals Inc. Podcast. I'm back here with Mikey on the keyboard. Hey guys, I don't know what he what's up? Called, you, you basically just say I'm doing whatever. Yeah, so whatever. Doing we're just going to say I'm doing whatever. Today we have a special guest, Amanda, with us. Hi. She's going to talk about kids on bikes. We previously did a kids on bike with John. Yeah, we talked about it in one of our podcasts, and yeah. then Amanda actually has been running it here at the store. What has it been, like every other week? Yeah, every other week. What, on, it, it, on Saturdays or Sundays? I, I was on Sundays for a little bit, but I'm going to be going back to Saturdays. Nice, so they're yeah. Mo- they're demos, right? Mostly yes. demos. And- well, I've been kind of running it as a long-term campaign so people can pop in and out of the town. We named it Erie, Ohio. Mm-hmm. So it's well, kind of... perfect. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I know. So then we just have different things going on all the time, so that way people can pop in or pop out because you never know a kid can get grounded. True. And uh, so why, why don't you give us a little quick synopsis of Kids on Bikes RPG? This is an RPG, by the way. So like in layman's terms. Yeah. Like, right. So I've kids, never heard of Kids on Bikes. What is it? It's a role playing game where you get to enjoy the horror genre in a Scooby Doo, Stranger Things type format and yeah so you get to go on an adventure as a kid or a teen and they do allow adults as well but obviously kids on bikes along with kids on brooms and teens in space kids and teens are the main focus adults on bikes i think they're trying to like for those i guess lame yeah layman would be like stranger things right that's what you're looking at stranger, yeah or any a lot any of 80s adventure where kids run into supernatural stuff I, I can't even think of the one movie there was a the monster squad or i may date myself both of you i don't know never heard of this yeah i kind of pull from different movies too for inspiration like howard the duck yes harry and the henderson yes gremlins, gremlins. there was a lot of that cool stuff back in the 80s yeah that's uh and i heard combat in this game when me and john talked about it, we heard combat was like very you kind of stay away from combat. You don't want to get in these altercations because it's very dangerous when you do get in combat situations. Was that true or is it more so like depending on how you format the game yourself? As with any game, you can modify it. Um, but it is more of a, narrat- a narrative on how to navigate the story. Yeah. It's less about fighting each other. Now, you're going to run into a big bad every yeah. now and then. And so then... You're going to have to have some way to combat that. It's usually part of, I'm going to guess it's usually part of the story on how they combat it. You mm-hmm. know, like, oh, it might be a book or a place or something, whatever it might be. But yeah, it's not, I, I don't think it's actual, like, you know, Dungeons and Dragons or other stuff, you're running in, stabbing things or shooting things. But I'm not thinking kids on bikes. I never known it to be one where they, that's the forefront. You know, you're not like combat oriented kids on bikes. You know? Yeah, it's not, but. It also depends on your players because one of the main charms to the Kids on Bikes series is the fact that they want the players to build the world the way they want to play. Mm-hmm. So there's even in the first generation of the book, as well as now in the second, there's a lot that comes to collaboration with your players. So you ask them for things that they want to see and you ask them for things they don't want to see. So that way everybody's happy after a session even if the ending of the session isn't one that's like a happy ending right okay. that's really cool you like i i was talking to john about that they should normalize that before you start the campaign or anything you fill out all of these things that you don't want mentioned or you you know might be a trigger or might be just things that don't resonate with you or what you want in the story and then everybody agrees to that right is it like a majority thing or is it just like a personal or thing? Or even the narrative, right? Or you're talking like the narrative is what you're talking about. Like where the players want to go. Like what Correct. kind of as adventure. As well as world building. So yeah. when I first started running Kids on Bikes um, and I followed the book as written, it even wants you to build the town that way. So you kind of ask your players for different landmarks. Where do their parents oh. work? And then you build the town around them. So like a session zero mm-hmm. would be... Who are you? What do you do? What do your parents do? Whatever, and then you take those pieces and put them together and build the town. Mm-hmm. So that way they feel like they're part of that city instead of you coming up with every, like with a pre pre made module where it's pre made. Like this is what's going on, and you're just inserted into it. The characters are helping you build the town, so they feel like they're part of it. Does yeah. that make any sense? Kind of like a small town vibe, like yeah. Dairy, like from It and stuff like yeah, that. Like a, yeah, like that's an example. Yeah, that would be a good example. So you kind of have reasons for why everybody is there, and the 
sessions I've been running here at Immortals, we're uh, centering it around a camp in the town. And so that's how the kids are meeting each other. Oh, nice. Okay. That's pretty cool. And I know, obviously, drumroll, new second edition was announced more recently. What date was it announced? Do you know the exact date? Um, it was announced a couple months back, but the PDF for those who... Uh, joined the Kickstarter came out this week, and I believe it came out on Wednesday. That's what we got the emails saying. Nice. Hey, here's your PDF. And so, what's what's the biggest thing that's new in Second Edition compared to you can yeah it's out now right you can yes. talk about it yeah go yes. ahead. Yes. So the PDF came out this week, and the main changes I noticed was there was more about the Session Zero and the World of Consent. So that was the first thing they listed triggers, things you need to discuss with your players before you start. And finally, we have something about the bikes. It's called Kids on yes. Bikes. And now we have stuff about bikes. Bike rules. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I was trying to mention earlier about the triggers and stuff. And actually, Amanda was oh, showing okay. me. She was showing me the um, the PDF and she was showing me uh, the, the bike section. That was really cool. Like They have the banana seats and like each has different traits. Yeah, what, what, which one? What else do they have on there? Like So uh, the color related. of your bike matters. So... You could have a bike that's rusty, and that means you're a tough person. Okay. Um, having a basket or a crate means you have items you need when you need them. Okay. Pegs you can have yeah, somebody yeah, yeah. ride on your bike with you, ah, and they also pegs. get the benefits of your bike. So each of the different colors of bikes has a different benefit you get while you're riding them. That's really cool. That's one of the first things they added. About- and then with the consent thing, they have a new thing called pressure check. And so... Well, at the beginning, you go through all the things like this is a trigger for me. I don't want to go through scenes with it, but I'm okay with them being referenced. It kind of categorizes them that way. And then as you play, people may not know all the things that upset them. So you do pressure checks as you play and say, okay, pressure check. And people can say they would like to take a detour if it's something that's really upsetting to them. Or they want to pump the brakes. Um, coast if it's something they're enjoying and they want to do more and spend more time on this. So they have more safeties for even the in game play than they did before. Nice. So they focus more on that interpersonal aspect in second edition. Does that be more for like new players? Like when you get new players in to see where they're at or? Yes. Okay. But I, it as, could be for like standard players, like maybe something you don't know about somebody you've been playing for years and. And you yeah. don't know that this one thing bothers yeah, them. And, yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you hit that. Um, accidentally. Okay. I, I, yeah, I get it. I, I think that was like, yes, I've seen that mechanic in a lot of the newer games. So yeah, I get it. You know, maybe I'm, I'm old. So to me, that's, I just don't talk about it. But, you know, yeah. I, I guess, I guess it is something new. So, um, that's cool. How about the rules? Any different rules? So, um, the rules are pretty similar to what they were before, but they added these extras and, uh, some of the other things that I noticed is now the character sheet has a back. And it's also consent for relationships for characters, which wasn't addressed before. So um, they can decide if they want to have romance during the game, if they're open to that or not. Now, most of the time you're not going to run into that, but you're going to end up with situations if people want to be the characters from Stranger Things, they already have relationships going on. Kids in love. Kids in love. I I can see. New DLC. I can see where that would be (laughs) something you would have to discuss. So that's yeah, on that's, the sheet. Okay. And it also um, includes things that they're really good at. They have a knack for something. And so that was something else with, that was recently added to the character sheets. Um, they, they still do the trope questions. They have additional tropes now. Nice. With your session in particular, I know you combined. There's there's the DLCs, Kids on Brooms. What's and then oh, go ahead. what was the other one? So I when I run here because... You're not going to end up with the same types of supernaturally affected kids every time. So if a player were to become powered, if they want to go more of a kids on brooms route, I have the book on hand in case they want to do that. If somebody wants to have like cybernetics, I use teens in space. So if they want to be an experiment from some freaky lab, we have options. So I use all the books so that way they can make the game what they want it to be. Okay, It's pretty cool. So let me go back to tropes. What is tropes now? Not to be dumb, but no, if I was going to ask like that. a bully or oh, a reclusive uh, eccentric, a, a, a uh, adventure scout, like a drawback or a, uh, what they would consider in other games drawbacks or, or, or um, 
problems. <laughs> well, that would be your flaws. You take your flaws, oh, flaws. that comes That's with it. The, the trope is like your overall theme of your character. Oh, so, oh okay, okay, okay. Um, Like jock or something like yeah, that? Like, you could oh. be a, a jock or a, a laid back slacker. Okay. 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 I see the difference. And Got then it. with those come your. <laughs> I just thought maybe all those things you said to me are like. You're like what? What? <laughs> laid back slacker. Get out. No, but yeah, I get it now. I yeah. Get it. So it comes with your your flaws, mm. and it also comes with suggestions for your bike even now. Nice. <laughs> like, hey, you should get that chain fixed, buddy. Yeah. Get those then, tires pumped. And then your age matters because you get also bonuses for being a kid or a teenager like all teenagers get rebellious for free, mm -hmm. which is one of the bonuses. And they get a bonus to their fight and their brawn. So these uh, new characters as people make them, or even if they're just modifying their character over time, they may lose a flaw because it no longer applies to them. And then you can adjust their character to fit what they are now. That's pretty cool. Uh, or as they age. So if somebody plays a character that's younger, as they go into becoming, becoming a teenager, they would get different benefits than they would if and they were a kid. Oh, yeah, just growth. Yep. That's that's fun. The only thing I haven't noticed is how to do some sort of thing like experience points, like you can with Dungeons & Dragons or Vampire the Masquerade. I was just about to ask that. Can um, you level up as a kid? So as a storyteller, I've worked through that with, giving them perks i let them buy i uh, use xp so they can buy story so if they want to do something special and they want us to do a session all about playing at the lake they can burn their xp for playing at the lake nice okay um they can also use their xp this is the thing i worked on was they could buy adversity tokens but at a higher cost so if they totally wiped themselves out last week this week if they want to use all their XP points to buy to adversity, that's fine. I think there's some systems that do that kind yep. of thing instead of like actually leveling up the, what you're doing. So I'm, I'm sure. So just kind of like a, a replenishment yeah. so you, you can keep going. Um, one of the other new things that came with the second edition was powered characters now have power tokens. And so that would be something that I'm going to branch out into is allowing them to use their XP to buy power tokens so that way they can use their powers more often. Oh, okay. That's not a bad deal. What do you think, what didn't you like about her? What did you want to, I don't want to say anything negative, but you know, what is, you know, if there's something negative, just say negative. But if it's like, what did you not see that you wanted to see or something that you wish would have happened or you were hoping for, you know? The eighties were a big time for other supernatural creatures out there, like vampires and werewolves. Mm -hmm. And, I keep trying to pitch this to my group that we should talk to the Hunters Entertainment to add kids on milk cartons, which is basically Lost Boys and oh, other. Got real, they got real dark. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, they got real dark. Now's your time to pitch thematically, it. Thematically, <laughs> yeah. thematically, um, yes, characters that are like werewolves and vampires to have to withdraw from society and they lose oh, their okay. families. Yes, yes, like, and uh, so having them disappear, that was that my was little a group's joke. They were even just saying children in the corn today because we <laughs> <laughs> see even that I could see as a, a well that'd be a darker kids on bikes but yeah children yeah. on a corn would be a good fit. What was the vampire movie that you were just um, Lost Boys? Lost Boys, geez, that's Diana's favorite movie. So one of them, so I shouldn't forget it. But, but yeah, that would be a good. That, okay, milk crates, but yeah, they got real dark. Cartons, but yeah, yeah, you know, it sounds really cartons, dark. Yeah, but... yeah, kids on cartons. But uh, yeah, that would yes, I could see that. I could see that. That would be a good one too. Oh, cool. I so mean, that's all that's missing. But I, I heard through the Kickstarter that they are adding anthropomorphic things and like features that are going to be in one of the separate books. Okay, for the animals, mm -hmm. uh, across the animals, like furries or not but furries. That I shouldn't say furries, but you know. But that wasn't included in the PDF that they released for second edition. That'd be cool. Yeah. Um, uh, when is the actual? So PDFs out now. You've been playing. You use the rules now. The second mm -hmm. edition, and then. Um, when are the these aren't the books these are like the old books yeah that's uh, first, first edition. edition so when is that uh, the print supposed to, supposed see? to be out mid-august when can i get it in my store so i can sell it to your players <laughs> <laughs> mid-august is what is advertised online so nice. i'm looking forward to that because i want a hard copy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so mid-august we'll, they'll be here it, and i'm hoping the rest of the supplements come out so that way I can buy those too, because I like to have all the pieces. Even when I ran Vampire, I had all the books. I, I think they are because I got a lot of people that since you started running it, and it, even before you ran it, a lot of people were interested in that game. And uh, I have a lot of you know like requests for it, and I get what I can, but 
I'm like, why is this coming out? And then I realized, oh, they're coming out with the second edition, so they're not printing anything more, and everything's gone. So I wouldn't want to sell a first edition anyway to somebody if they're if the new second edition is coming out. So mm-hmm. hopefully that'll come out. It'll be advertised. But uh, all right, and uh, thanks for coming in, Amanda. Thank you and so you much. said you started doing something on TikTok. Yeah, so I I run a channel, the Notorious Nana Yaga. Mm-hmm. I'll put I'm it in the description. I'm starting to do some videos. Right now I was doing a little bit of recipes, but it's got a really an occult vibe, and I'm going to start doing game ratings and stuff <laughs> okay. on there as well. So, all right. Well, if you're on TikTok, go ahead and uh, follow her, and we'll put the link in the description. If you like what you see and you want to hear more, just uh, follow us on Immortals, Inc. or go to immortalsinc.com and check us out on all our social media. And uh, come Thank back you. again. Come back again for some I'll more. I'll be here. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Amanda. All right, guys. Check it out.